Hi, Chethan. Thanks for sitting and chatting with us today. Um, some of you might know Chethan uh, from, you know, on he's got YouTube videos. He's quite uh, got quite a big following on Twitter and YouTube uh, because of the free knowledge he gives out. Um, but let's get to know you a little bit better and more intimately. Um, why don't you tell us a bit more about what, where you are now and what you do in your career and how everything sort of led up to that? I currently work as a product designer, which means I deal with screens, UI and UX. But um, motion design, um, graphic design, apparel design, and all these you know things like filmmaking and video editing, that is something that I picked up when I, uh, you know, for, for, since I was in school, right? And when I was in school and college, this is something that I used to do on the side. Uh, I wasn't introduced to UI, UX or product design uh, until two years back. Um, it was just, uh, you know, doing all these other creative things. And uh, motion design is something that I really liked. Uh, it was something that I was, I felt I was good at. Um, I even used to make short films with my friends and we used to make movie trailers and visual effects and stuff. So uh, motion design was really something that I really enjoyed. And even today I do a lot of motion design work. Um, things, uh, most of this, I do it for the company I work for. And I upload these on Dribble so that like people can see, uh, you know, my motion design skills. Um, if anybody would go to my YouTube channel and go to my playlist of motion graphics, I have like 300 animated videos, uh, like clips and stuff. Uh, yeah, so motion is something that I really enjoy. And um, the way I take inspiration is uh, off by watching uh, movie trailers, um, game trailers, um, the product videos by Apple, Microsoft, Google and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not as good as that. Like I won't be able to pull that off. But it's something that I think I, you know, uh, I get a lot of inspiration and ideas from. Uh, so even though I don't do motion design, you know, hands on like so much all the time, um, I do try to think like a motion designer sometimes. <laughs> I think yeah. it sounds like you don't give yourself enough credit. <laughs> Probably <laughs> sure you pretty much are a motion designer, but just maybe not confident enough to give yourself that label yet. But you know, keep it up. I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> So you didn't, did I, just to clarify, did you learn mm -hmm. graphics, uh, motion design in school or you're completely self-taught? No, I'm a completely self-taught designer. I'm not from design school. Uh, I don't have a formal education in design. I never took up any online course. I never paid for any course. It was always YouTube, uh, which was where I learned everything from. So tell me in terms of like, sort of a little bit of history timeline, how you came across Lottie. Um, honestly, I, uh, I don't remember. I think, um, I saw it on Twitter. Um, I'm really active on Twitter. So most of the information that I get any news is on Twitter. And, uh, I heard of, I heard this. So I was actually, I did not know what SVG was. What does, what does SVG stand for? What is it used for? Um, and then like when I did a little bit of research, uh, I understood that, you know, it's a little bit of vector and things like that. And uh, I think somehow I discovered Lottie and I was figuring out how is it possible to make animations and so that they don't pixelate when you scale it. How does it all work? It, it didn't make sense to me because I didn't understand the concept then. And then I like kept reading and I went through the blog posts. Uh, I went through the entire website. I kind of figured out what this was. And, uh, you know, that's, and I kept learning and learning and learning at the initial stages. It was really hard because there wasn't any tutorial or excellent documentation. Uh, I had to figure things out on my own. It was quite hard. And even when we introduced Lottie for the first time at the company, uh, which I worked for, uh, we went through, we had a lot of problems and the animation I created was not working in the code, in the app. And we were trying to figure out, I mean, it's working on the laptop, it's working on the Lottie player, but it isn't working in the code, what's the issue? So, uh, and then I dug deeper and deeper and I figured out that you can't use drop shadows, you can't use complex masks, and a lot of these restrictions were there. And uh, so that was like a really good learning. It was, it was a very hard experience, but it was a good learning. And uh, yeah, and uh, and then I've been in touch with uh, the guys at Lottie for quite, for a very long time now, um, and yeah, it's been great. <laughs> hmm. So it sounds like you kind of found Lottie in its Stone Age era, and yeah, have yeah, moved with it to present day. Yeah, exactly. So 
I would love for you to tell me sort of how, what you found on the benefits of using Lottie, like, you know, sort of comp- now, compare now to before Lottie. What is the contrast? What's the difference? What, what changed? Yeah, I think one thing that really changed was um, uh, getting ideas of making your product more engaging, uh, more fun and more lively. Before, if we had to think of animation, we would have to think of the developer and uh, and the developer would literally, it would be a pain for him to manually animate or code or whatever it is. It is going to be really hard for him. So we always never went down that road because we knew it wasn't going to be, it, it wasn't a possibility. And especially for us designers who don't know how to code, coding and animation is impossible. We can't do it. Um, and And now that we have Lottie, I think it opens up a lot of, uh, ideas and concepts and um, it feels there's nothing limiting us it feels that we can literally have an idea and implement that idea without having much dependency on developers um, I mean I'm, I, I'm a hardcore user of Webflow so I know how Lottie integrates with Webflow I know all the things you can do with it it's it's really great and awesome there is literally uh, nothing that you actually can't do uh, it's phenomenal so before, what were you using then? We didn't use anything at all. So just like static, never, static imagery. Yes, that's it. Like we never used to do anything. So I know you use Lottie files for a couple of things, but share with us what's the one thing that's really been a game changer for you that we at Lottie files have uh, created. I think after Lottie files plugin came for After Effects, I stopped using Body Movin. Um, I just started using Lottie files, which, which, which I really liked. Uh, the interface is nice. It's fast. Um, uh, there's a lot of things that you can do uh, with Lottie files. I might not use all the features that the plugin provides, but I'm sure that people might want to use it for some case or the other. Um, it's never, I've never actually had a reason to use all those features. Um, uh, yeah, so I think, yeah, I think it's a really great, uh, plugin it's a good product it's definitely user friendly um, um yeah i do use the lottie uh, app on the phone to test how it looks on mobile device whether it works uh, that's something that i do before lottie files plugin came i was using body Movin. i mean that was the one that we everybody used to use and uh, lottie files uh, is is a bit better it has a little bit more functionality and features i would say which is good um, I don't. I don't think I remember any of them, but I do remember using the entire plugin, which is really good. Um, and the way we work is usually the people who have to show the animation to they would want to see uh, with a mockup of the website or the screen. They di- they don't want to see only the animation. They want to see the entire thing. So I would usually have to export an MP4, uh, like a video file, and share it to them so that they can actually get context and understand how it works. And once that's approved, then I just send the Lottie file, the JSON file to the developer. And uh, I think uh, that's, and I send him the MP4 file so that he has a reference as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the workflow that I follow. When now, like we've integrated with Figma as well. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. used the latest thing, like how are you finding I have, I have. Figma for Lottie, uh, Figma for Lottie files? Lottie files for Figma? Lottie files for Figma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, I did test it out the day it came out. Um, I didn't understand what it does. So the the concept of turning a Lottie file into a GIF is really great. It's awesome. Uh, so sometimes what we do is we I put the Lottie f- the JSON file in the you know the plugin, and I convert that into a GIF, and then I put that in the mockup. So sometimes I might not have to render the animation out. Um, I can just mirror the the frame or the screen on my phone using Figma mirror and then I could show it to the stakeholders so that that's another way that we do but um, I feel sometimes that it lags I guess I don't know if it's Figma's issues or my phone or Lottie files I don't know what the issue is but then uh, you know it, it, people prefer to see it I mean especially now that we are working remotely we can't show phones to everyone so sending a video file is much better and easier. Um, and I have like a very straight streamlined workflow. Um, I animated in After Effects, then I test it on the phone if it works, and uh, I use the Lottie Files plugin to export. Uh, that's pretty much what I do. I don't try different things. I don't you know, get into the details and stuff. I just have a fixed requirement and a process, and I just follow that, yeah. So would you think that since 
using not necessarily Lottie files, but Lotties that yeah. that correspondence between you and the dev has reduced? I'm not sure how to answer that question. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, uh, Lottie is just an additional thing that we brought in uh, for our product. Um, so the only thing the developer wants is the JSON file and the reference image, the reference video. Uh, everything else that I use is, you know, is used by me. Uh, so I don't think the developer ever uses any of the Lottie products. He doesn't use the website. He doesn't use the plugin. He doesn't use uh, the app on the phone. So yeah, so most of the work that we do is done by the developers, the, the designers ourselves. And the last uh, stage is to give him the JSON file so that he can implement it into code. So it almost sounds like you designers are taking work away from the developers. Like you do a lot more now than you used to and the developers just have to implement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's really empowering for designers like us. And uh, I mean, it's fun creating Lottie animations. Why would you give that to the developer to do it? <laughs> so yeah. As a designer, what sort of difficulties do you encounter when you're making Lottie animations and how do you overcome them? You know, like you get issues like with expressions or the issue with gradients and stuff like, I'd love to kind of know any tips and tricks for any designers that are listening who are maybe going through the same thing. If you ask me today, like right today, then I already know the restrictions. I know the constraints. I know what you can do and what you can't do. So anytime I have to come up with an animation or a, or a, or a design, I know what is not going to work. But if you, if, if, you, if you talk about how it was when I started Lottie, learning Lottie, the first animation that I ever did for the company, uh, we faced a lot of difficulties because I had no idea why it used to break, what was the issue. So the developer actually had to, I don't know, I don't know what he did, but then he found out that this effect is causing the issue, that effect is causing the issue. So I kind of learned uh, what is possible and what is not over a period of time. Because the first time we did, I put in tons of gradients and alpha mats and masking and drop shadow and stuff. And we made it so beautiful. And then we realized, okay, this is not working. So we have to strip down everything. Uh, and yeah, that's when I kind of kept researching online. I asked questions in forums and see if people knew. And that's when I actually kind of reached out to the guys at Lottie and told them, please help me. <laughs> I'm having a lot of issues. So they, they sent me this documentation that Airbnb had put out with uh, all the, you know, all the effects that After Effects has and which is compatible with Lottie and which is not. So I had to like read through everything and understand it and try it. And I also realized one thing that um, if a Lottie animation works on the website, it might not work on your phone. So you have to test it on both devices uh, and check it out. Um, so yeah, it was, it was quite hard. So the best thing I would tell designers is to actually read through the documentation, which is super important. Um, test it uh, on your mobile phone and test it on the browser. That way you get to know where, on which device it works. And uh, you know, just keep doing it and figuring it out. Um, if it's not working, it's probably because of an effect that you would have used. So reading the documentation can really help. So are you saying that any animations you make today, you just avoid those effects that don't work? Yes, because I know they don't. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give someone who wants to start making their first animation? I would say documentation, reading the documentation is quite important. Because if you spend so much time uh, adding all effects and you really want to implement that into code, uh, then it's going to be a waste of time because you came up with so many ideas and visual styles, which is not going to work. Um, so I think one thing that I would suggest is to actually check lottiefiles.com and go through the animation section. You will find a pattern of all the animations that are there. So if there is an idea that you have and you don't see that idea, it probably means that it's not possible it's not implementable. Um, so going through the Lottie files, I think would be a good option to just go through it. Um, and another thing I would suggest is to download a couple of the After Effects files that are there on Lottie and open it up and see how that is structured. Um, what are the layers that are there? What are the shape layers and uh, things? What are the effects that are used? If there is masking effect, how did they actually do the masking? 
uh, because using track mats is not possible. Um, you can use only the inbuilt masking effect. Um, so I think um, learning how to structure your After Effects file, what effects to use, like doing that research would be a first step. And then actually um, animating uh, your animation in After Effects. And the other thing you could do is at every step that you add an effect or a layer, I would suggest you test it out on your phone or device. So you kind of know, okay, fine, I use this effect. Okay, this effect works. And then you add in the next layer. Um, maybe it's text, maybe it's a shape, maybe it's uh, another effect. So at every stage of your animation, keep testing it so that you understand um, what is possible and what is not. So let's say you add a drop shadow at a particular point of time uh, and everything was working till then. The moment you add a drop shadow, everything broke. So now you know it, why it doesn't work. It doesn't work because of the drop shadow because that's the next stage or that's the increment uh, effect that you added to your animation. I think as a, uh, as a product designer, I would say, or a UI UX designer, um, learning animation, um, if not like crazy motion graphics work, at least making simple animations for your product is a really good skill to have. Um, it, I think, I think um, one thing that I would uh, say is for me, since I've been doing a lot of uh, graphic design work, motion graphics, I've, been, I've explored a lot of domains of design. Um, and every time I explore something new, I, I think I grow, I think my creativity improves. Um, I, I look at things not in a particular way. I end up looking at it in four or five different ways. I get more perspectives and ideas because I have explored more domains and more fields of design. And I look at things differently uh, with different perspectives because I have all that different knowledge that I have. So, uh, and now that Lottie has made it really accessible for people to make animations super fast and implement them in products, um, I think it's a skill that I think you should learn and you should develop. And, and you don't need to have like hardcore crazy skills to do Lottie animations. Um, learning After Effects does have a steep learning curve. I do agree. But if you spend, I don't know, maximum two weeks or maybe even a week um, trying out something every day then i think it should be easier and uh, with lottie having with lottie being so simple with where you can create very simple animations i think it's uh, i think it's something that everybody should dabble in and give it a shot so i've heard a lot of people who ask me how i make my animations and i say after effects and the moment i say after effects they they get scared because they think after effects is like it's like learning how to build a rocket uh, <laughs> it's uh, I would say there is a steep learning curve but there is definitely a lot of um, I would say it's a really good skill to have as a designer motion design is really great um, it's fantastic um, because just making something static is fine but uh, making it animated and bringing it to life is a, it's a bigger satisfaction itself and it's really awesome and uh, and I, I always tell this to people, um, the more skills you have, the more value you have as a designer. Um, it, um, today, I know graphic design, I know motion graphics, I know product design, I know visual design. I have a lot of skills. So people, and let's say you're looking for a job, people would rather come to you because they don't have to spend money hiring somebody else who with individual skills. Like they don't have to separately hire a motion designer. They don't have to separately hire a graphic designer. If you are a person who, have more, who has more skills, then you can do it. Um, and uh, yeah, graphic design is something that uh, many people usually start with because that's the most easiest. Uh, but I think picking up After Effects is really a fantastic thing. It is going to take time. It is going to be hard, uh, but there are tons of resources online. And I mean, I could do it. Anybody else can do it. It's not that hard. Yeah. So the way I learned motion design was by um, watching tutorials. Um, and just recreating the thing that was designed in the uh, in in the tutorial. Now, I would I would not recommend anybody to purchase a Udemy course or a Skillshare course and learn all the tools of or all the features of After Effects. I think um, the way you have to learn After Effects and motion design is by just keep watching these videos and keep recreating them. And you're going to be, and whoever is teaching that is going to teach you something different or the other. He's going to teach you maybe a new expression. He's going to teach you a new feature, a new shortcut or something. And you will remember these better uh, when you do that yourself. Uh, and you know, because you're watching the tutorial and you're recreating it at the exact same time, that's when it's going to register in your head. 
but rather when you watch like an entire video which talks about okay this chapter we're going to cover all the shortcuts this chapter we're going to cover all the interfaces you will not remember that because you will not have context mm. um and i would just say keep watching tutorials keep watching there are tons and over a period of time you will you, i mean youtube is going to suggest you better uh, tutorials better youtube channels to watch um and anytime there's a new and and, and the best part about this is if you follow the right channels on youtube and regularly watch tutorials every time there's a new trend any time there's a new update to after effects any time there's a new feature or anything you're going to get to know about it because somebody's going to make a tutorial on it so you're going to stay up to date with whatever is out in the market uh, so yeah just just keep making tutorials uh, just keep watching tutorials just keep recreating them and just keep making a list and over a period of time you're going to see yourself uh, improve um, it could be so i remember today that uh if i see my old animation my easing uh was really bad and today uh, i mean over a period of time since i've used after effects i know how to make it smooth i know how to uh make it feel really nice like i could make it similar to how apple makes their videos uh if i put in the effort and the time for it i mean i know how to do it before it i would not know how to do it because i haven't i don't have that much knowledge uh so yeah so just keep watching videos that is the best way i would tell somebody to get into motion design uh how do you stay up to date with the latest design and lottie trends uh i think um i follow a lot of um designers on twitter who use lottie a lot um and who have created these lottie packs and stuff um and especially when they tweet out something i get to know and i always follow guys on lottie so as soon as they tweet something i get to know about it uh you know the moment dot lotty was was a new extension that you came up you guys came up with uh, i read all about it um so twitter is basically the place where i get knowledge from for you personally where do you get the inspiration for the designs that you do so most of it is usually from real apps and websites um dribble is something that i go to look at only if uh, i'm only as only uh if i have like no ideas left if i really need more and maybe a nice concept um or some kind of a visual feel to uh, the design i'm making that's dribble is usually my last stage i usually go to mobin.design for apps i use landbook awards and one page love for websites um and most of the times it's just playing around with the apps that i use um i mean i if I, if there's some if a cons let's say i want to list out a table or a specific style for a button or list items i kind of know which app to refer to because i know it does it really well um only when uh, and this is especially in terms of uh, ux um when it comes to ui it's uh, dribble i mean dribble is the last part i go to um but i kind of refer to mobin.design because they have the best repository of uh, apps uh, of real apps and that's where i get most of my inspiration ideas from and then what about are there any particular designers or individuals that you get inspiration from so uh if you would say designers um uh, i look up to them uh and i take inspiration not from their work but the kind of work that they do it's not like i go to that particular designer uh, portfolio and i see how he designed it i don't do that kind of work um i kind of take that for working on side projects so most of the time any designer i look up to is a person who does more than just doing his regular job uh, you know his whether he's a freelancer or whether he works for a company i look up to them because they do much more than just that it could even be sharing work of others um on twitter so there is a designer called andreas um i i don't know i'll probably share a link but he always shares these cool concepts um product videos and designs made by other designers and every time he tweets i'm so excited to see it because it's going to be so cool it's not something that he created but he shares these awesome work and i really love that and most of the other designers that i look up to are uh, those who kind of have youtube channels who share content uh, who create um you know a lot of resources for designers um who have a lot of side projects and uh, you know who put out a lot of teaching resources educational resources and stuff like that 
because I work on a lot of side projects. Uh, I mean, a lot of time I do is working on side projects along with my full-time job. And it's really nice to, you know, follow these designers, get ideas and inspiration and talk to them and ask them how they approach these things, how they manage time. Um, how, how do you get an, like you, everybody has tons of projects and ideas to start, but how do you pick one and finish it? Um, how do they structure their entire day? And most of these guys are older than me. Uh, they are in like leadership positions and they have families and, you know, how do they manage and balance all that? And uh, I always look up to them and I'm like, these guys have families and much more responsibilities than me and they do so much work and I don't have as much responsibilities as them and I should be doing three times the amount of work that they're doing. So, yeah. Uh, and these are the people that, you know, that I would say have really inspired me to become the designer I am today. How would you like to see Lottie evolve? Like, you know, let's talk about the utopian universe here. <laughs> I think, uh, I think the, uh, this might be quite far-fetched, but uh, <laughs> um, implementing any animation with any effects, um, even, um, I think one thing that I really wanted was to have image sequences a part of uh, animation be implemented in apps. Like right now, image sequences can be used for websites. I've seen that with Webflow, uh, but that's not possible with uh, apps. And uh, implementing that in apps would be really good, it really awesome. Because let's say you want to do some sort of um, character animation and maybe something to do with images and stuff, um, that really restricts you to make great and amazing animations. I don't even know what kind of things would be possible. Things like um, parallax effects on mobile phones, um, masking, you know, text zooming in and taking the shape of the image or, you know, the text masking the image. It, the possibilities are endless. I think the more, I think once Lottie evolves and gives more uh, features and possibilities to designers, I think that's when we end up getting more ideas and we'll be able to do it. Um, because right now I know what you can do with Lottie and what you can't do. So I don't think outside the box because I know if I do think outside the box, I can't implement it because Lottie doesn't allow it. And, uh, yeah. So once Lottie brings up with more features and stuff, I think it, it, it might become much more easier for everyone to think creatively. And yeah, I'm really happy that uh, Lottie is bring, doing a lot of things and making a lot of improvements. I'm still waiting for Drop Shadow to be a feature. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably you and a lot of other people, I bet. Yes, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. <laughs>